brought to you in partnership with Yechad New York, because everyone belongs, and the Orthodox Union. Welcome to this special episode of Able to Learn Air, the one and only program that focuses on the needs, concerns, and achievements of the differently able. I would like to say thank you, Able to Learn Air would like to say thank you to Yechad New York and the Orthodox Union for this special episode, and, um, which is also in partnership with them. Uh, we would like to um, thank Yechad New York and um, welcome our uh, special guest, um, her name is uh, Rebecca Sharag Mayer. Sure. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you, Arlene and Lawrence, for having me. I'm very excited to be here. My name is Rebecca Shrag Mayer, and I'm the director in New York for Yachad, which is the National Jewish Council for Disabilities. Okay. Um, can you explain a little bit? Well, it's not a little, it's a lot. <laughs> Can you explain um, what the missions and goals of Yahad is? Sure. So, Yahad is dedicated to enriching the lives of Jewish individuals with disabilities and their entire family network um, by enhancing their communal participation um, and their connection to Judaism through social and educational programs as well as support services. Okay, what types of activities does Yahad um, um, help people partake in? Okay, great. So we're most known for our social recreational programming, uh, local weeknight programs, uh, Jewish holiday programs, weekend retreats, you know, in, in pre, pre-pandemic um, educational programs. We One of my favorites is, is we run a huge... Uh, family weekend for about 900 people every year um, where there's different sessions going on and programming for each each family member respectively you know having having their own programs to attend uh, we have schools we have four schools here in New York um, a counseling department we have multiple they have programs for adults over 21 um, either learning um, independence or, or job training uh, we have about 20 summer camp programs um, and partnerships and um, a birthright trip to Israel. Okay. And just, you know, to name it, to name stuff. <laughs> um, with, now, since you are in the research that we've done, uh, um, uh, Yachad is uh, important you know, works with uh, the Orthodox Union. Can you explain a little bit about how the Orthodox Union helps you guys and um, all of that? Sure. So, Yachad was founded in 1983 by the Orthodox Union um, as an offshoot of one of the other Orthodox Union programs called NCSI, which is a teen youth movement, so about, you know, 37, 38 years ago that they recognize this need at their teen programming to really have better supports for individuals with disabilities in, in these you know, social recreational programs. Um, the Orthodox Union is most known for their kosher certification, um, which is one of the biggest kosher certification symbols and um, you know, take a product. So you're in Vermont, so name, name drop my favorite, Ben & Jerry's. Um, if, when you look at a Ben and Jerry's carton, it has a little OU label on that, and what it means is that it is certified kosher. That there's um, that there's somebody who's coming and making sure that all the products going into it are kosher, um, and then you know what it says on the on the package is really in there, you know, and so on. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's a nonprofit, so the money that's made from the kosher certification is then channeled back into the rest of, of the, the beneficiaries and there's many of them um, and and we generously received from the OU um, you know a, a other beneficiaries include you know, synagogue, synagogue services uh, Pugly Birthright has a free spirit branch um, there's a, a magazine publication a research center um, there's many different communal efforts um, that are receiving funding 
you labeled. <coughs> okay, um, uh, my wife wants to ask this question. Go ahead. Okay. Um, what are the different social programs you you guys uh, offer? Can can you can you expand on the camps and that kind of thing? In terms of, okay, since you say, uh, since you said independence and inclusiveness, um, do you train or, or teach people like how to live on their own and maybe get their own apartment and that kind of thing? Say that again. What age do they go? Oh yeah. Uh, what age is Yahat up to? Okay, so let's get to the real important, well, the, of course this is real important, but as far as, you know, religious life, you know, being with someone who is, being people with special needs ourselves, um, you know, for many years, shuls and, and um, other, uh, you know, religious centers haven't been um, really accessible, I mean, it's, I mean, um, it has been since the Americans with Disabilities Act, but how do how do you make how does Yahad make uh, make religious life easier for uh, people with special needs on your end, especially with with prayer books and in certain holidays, etc. Okay. Um, 
I know I'm, we're jumping um, around. I know we're jumping around, yeah. but go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, you know, I would say in in Judaism, there is an idea of teaching each person according to their own right, meaning everyone learns differently, and that we're you know it's it's our obligation to to reach every person in the way that they're able to be reached. Um, in terms of synagogues and and what we're doing to promote inclusion, I think we need to pause here and really reflect on how far we've come. Our synagogues look so incredibly different than they did, let's say, 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. 50 years ago, when you walked into a synagogue, you didn't see people with disabilities. They were away. They were in homes and institutions. They were hidden. Whereas you walk into any synagogue now, and you look around and you see lots of people who are differently abled. And, and um, it's really an amazing thing, but, you know, on a, a big picture, how far we've come, and there's a lot to celebrate. Mm-hmm. Now, with that said, of course, there's always, you know, ways to go, and we've only come this far through awareness um, and, and, you know, pushing in that direction. Um, so in terms of things that we're doing to make our, our synagogues and our communities more accessible um we i mean again on a big level for years we ran trips to washington dc and albany uh where we um our teens with and without disabilities met with local politicians to discuss disability legislation um we we ran um an initiative um a grant for synagogues to make their space more accessible um, to you know help is that was that part so sorry was that part was that part of the legislation or the legislation was different so no so that's that was separate this was a yahad initiated um program and and separately yahad provides training for clergy for synagogue boards inclusion boards we send speakers um, to talk about disability inclusion in in Jewish community centers and synagogues and schools, um, but you know, even though we're doing all of these different things, the I think the best advocacy that we do and the best, you know, the best service that we could bring to a synagogue is modeling. Um, we run, you know, pre-COVID, we were running, you know, thirty something community weekends uh, a year here in New York alone, and we have regions um, throughout the U.S. and in Canada and in Israel who partner with different communities. And um, when we go in and modeling um, really how much our individuals can do, whether it's it's them leading different parts of the prayers or giving a sermon, um, you know, and it's, but, you know, we're, we're there one one weekend, one Sabbath of, of the year. Um, but, you know, it's, it's a little glimpse into some of the abilities. And, um, and I think it's, we highlight, right? We highlight meaningful employment for individuals with disabilities. And um, we highlight our, the relationships our advisors and peers have with individuals with disabilities. And they're really trained and supported throughout the program to become leaders and to become ambassadors of inclusion with, you know, and having a pro-disability ad- attitude. So when we're talking about we- making our, our synagogues more inclusive and more accessible, I think the biggest thing that we can really do is, is you know, person by person, um, providing opportunities for people to have exposure and to, um, you know, highlight the abilities and, and highlight where we can include. Talk about your employment program uh, for people with disabilities within Yachad. Um, so we have um, in a few of our regions um, different vocational programs run through our adult day program. Mm-hmm. Um, one that I would like to highlight um, because I am, I'm constantly blown away by is we have something called Yachad Gifts. Um, Yafad started, you know, Yafad has been working within the communities for a long time to help support our individuals um, gaining employment, whether it's internships or paid employment, and have created beautiful partnerships with you know, CVS and Children's Place and lots of other, um, and, you know, places that, that we, we know and, and visit. Um, 
but the, the need is so large and something I'm so proud of is is our organization started a gift basket business called Yafa Gifts that employs individuals with disabilities. So they put together so basically they're putting together they're working in groups and putting together the gift baskets, right? Exactly. Exactly. The store is based out of Brooklyn, New York and it's an online business. You know, if you need a gift for a holiday, a birthday you know, whatever it may be, they, they make beautiful gift baskets. And um, for example, what type of because um, uh, I, I saw the website. So mm-hmm. if, if you can um, talk a little bit about some of the gift baskets that are put together, go ahead. Um, so just examples. Like. So yeah, some examples. Actually, recently I wanted to send one to my grandmother, who's ninety-two, and um, wow. I haven't seen in a long time, and. They had beautiful, like, Mother's Day ones with different, like, spa kits and things like that. Then there's a lot of food baskets, like, for birthdays with, with fun treats. Um, they're very colorful. They have, you know, you need a baby gift. They have baskets with baby soaps and clothes and books and things like that. Um, so, no, was there someone... Uh, go ahead. If someone wanted to um, send a Passover basket... Mm-hmm. You would send like Passover food stuff in the basket, yeah. or yep, there's a section mm-hmm. that with the with the foods that um, that would be you know kosher for Passover, mm-hmm. matzah and and certain other things, <laughs> correct? Yeah, I'm not sure if they have matzah specifically, but foods mm-hmm. exactly foods that um, mm-hmm. that are you know pa- Passover foods. Okay, um, so let's. Uh, do more promoting, uh, especially about your um, your your new book, and uh, and also I looked on the website, and it was um, you know you, it has Purim prayers, and it has other uh, things there for Passover, and you know let's talk a little bit about that as well. the Torah, the Bible, and um, holiday programming are are deeply incorporated into everything that we're doing as we're a Jewish organization. Um, So whether it's a a Jewish holiday party, like we just had, um, you know, a community gathering for the Jewish holiday of Tu B'Shvat, which celebrates uh, the new year for trees. We had, um, you know, we had a different, like, learning program and um, for the next holiday, which is, you know, coming up in, in the coming days of Purim, um, you know, having a Purim party and um, opportunities to um, practice many of the different customs for the day. Um, for example? In, in each of our, so um, an example would be um, something new that we actually started through this pandemic. Something I love is, is we sent holiday boxes and... Um, we send the holiday boxes to our members filled with different activities and learning um, to enjoy together. And the bulk of what is in the box is really connected to what we're doing over Zoom. So um, one of the things in the Purim box that just went out is um, ingredi- you know, an ingredient list and um, uh, an apron with fabric markers because tonight at 8 p.m., <laughs> open to all, um, yafad.org slash Zoom, we are having a Hummin Hashin baking demo, and, which oh, is wow. a, the, the customary cookie. You know, well, this is going to air after that, but go okay. ahead. It's fine. Okay, so, so then, you know, just, just as an example. Um, but, you know, in, throughout our regions, one of the more popular programs is something called Kitsa and Parsha, which is a, a Torah study class, a weekly Torah study class, with a great dinner and friends. Um, and we, we also have an amazing partnership with an organization called Partners in Torah, where it matches people um, who are interested in learning one-on-one on a weekly basis over the phone, uh, learning any Torah topic. Mm-hmm. Um, you, can, you can sign up if that's something any of the listeners are interested in on our website. Um, and, um, and on the website also, you know, as you mentioned, we have a holiday section where you can, you know, find a, a holiday packet, which, you know, it's learning games and recipes and crafts. 
um, and different things for the holiday. But uh, as you also mentioned, yes, you, you put out a new book. Um, yeah, that is so excited. Hot off the press. Um, a brand new prayer book um, has been released after years and years in the making. Um, called the Yafad Corinth that are published by Corinth, um, who they're they're one of the you know the bigger um, publishers. And um, what's unique about this is is that it has conceptual translation. What is meant um, by that? I'm I, I'm sorry. What is meant by conceptual translation? Okay, so instead of you know reading a prayer and having that old English that like to really understand. You know, it's English. It's the English translation even harder than saying the Hebrew words themselves. Um, you're getting a, a picture of the overall concept of what the prayer is about. That it's a little bit easier. You know, a little bit more user friendly. Mm. There's notes where to stand, where to sit. Um, you know, there's there's also little pictures, right? If you bow at a certain point, you know, I'll have a picture of somebody bowing. Um, but it's it's a little. It's the same prayer book that you know, found by the other Korean sitters, prayer books, um, but it's just a little bit more user-friendly and, and colorful, actually, color-coded. <laughs> mm. So, like, purple, different colors uh, represent yeah, some... Yeah, mm -hmm, exactly, and um, we're, this is something that, um, you know, two, two employees of Yafad were working on for years with the publishing company, was just released, and we um, opened to all every Monday night at 8 p.m. have um, a different community leader come and present on a different page of the prayer book. Mm -hmm. um, so any, you know, open to anyone in the community to come and learn together on a weekly basis, you know, these small tidbits. And you can access that again on our website, yafas.org. Um, and the exact link would be yafas.org slash sitter. Mm -hmm. uh, how has the... Um Pandemic. Now, this is a big question because it's, you know, it could take up a lot of time too. But how, uh, you know, you said you kept on saying pre-pandemic, and then pandemic. So how has the pandemic of COVID nineteen changed everything within your activities within Yachad? Okay, so I think like the rest of the world, we're we're all different because of this. Um, on many, many levels. And um, I say that as I over here um, in the next room, my kids are home from school because their class is quarantining. Um, and, you know, it's a new reality on many, many, many fronts. Um, here in New York, we lost five dear friends, you know, it, just in the spring. And navigating those losses with people that have been connected to Yafan and, and to all the friends involved and, and you know for for so many years so employees as well and, and, and employees of Yahad also so members, um, members. are individuals mm -hmm. with disabilities and wow. you know and then on top of that you know many many staff have um, incurred familial losses um, you know there, there's been so much loss in our community but it's so you know it takes such a toll when you're looking around at your friends at a program and notice who isn't there so I, I, you know, I, that's first and foremost. Um, I would say also, you know, the stay at home period. Well, there are silver linings, and I think at Yafa there have been, you know, many silver linings for the stay at home period and and how we reach our members and, and really challenging ourselves to be as effective and efficient as possible. Um, but you know, for a community that by large appreciates routine. You know, the, the, the sense of routine went up in flames. You know, jobs on hold, schools on and off, sleepily camps, which are so important to, to people in our orbit, they, they weren't allowed to run in New York. So it's been it's been a year, you know, let alone our, our weekend retreats and social programs, the way that we do them. It's, you know, one thing after the other that is just looking so different and it takes so much adjusting to for everyone. But, you know, even more so people who um, who really thrive off of routine and really, you know, crave that structure. Um, I, something, something else I would say interesting that I don't think it's unique to New York, um, but something interesting we saw here is um, the group homes in New York, um, government-funded housing um, units for individuals with disabilities, they had to be incredibly serious about 
about uh, all the have to be incredibly you know diligent uh, with all the safety protocols um, yeah and, and no visitation to boot you know exa- exactly so yeah. that's exactly where i was going you know so when you're so strict that meant that our members weren't going home to visit their families and if they did they needed to quarantine or maybe yeah. they would have a spot when they get back maybe not because it's too much of a risk and and the destruction of what that does of, of not seeing friends and family outside of the people you're living with um you know and and i think that things are a little bit you know moving in a little bit of a different direction as people are getting more used to the routine but um but I would say also is, you know, your question earlier of where we've gone so far, um, for, for all that, for everywhere we've gone and everywhere we've accomplished in terms of inclusion, I, I'm curious what this new emphasis on pods and small groups is going to be doing to all of our progress, right? Because we're, we, we're now not talking about, like, how to get every single person to the table. We're talking about, like, who are the, the very few people nearest and dearest to you, closest to you, and they are at your table, and anyone else is a threat. And I think it's going to take time to undo that. And, and you know, I urge all the listeners to really think about the people who aren't making the cut and and reaching out to them. Mm. Uh, yeah, and, and, and making outsiders feel, you know, um, even more outsiders. Yeah, I, I see your point there. Um, what are the misconceptions around people with special needs when they first meet them? Okay. It's, it's just um, an opi- opinion question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I, I think my answer is pretty simple. Of um, When we meet people, we focus on our differences. How we... You know, it's just it's it's human nature. We we first notice, you know, our, our, our differences, you know, male, female, tall, short, whatever it may be. Um, and something important to the organization is, you know, at these programs that yes, okay, it is natural, people see different, um, but really focusing on seeing the commonalities. Um a short story if we have time. Um, no, it's fine. No, it's but, fine. If we go over, it's 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 okay. completely okay. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. Great. Um, so for um, a dozen years, well, um, a dozen years, I was involved with the Biafra summer program in Israel called Yad Yad, which is a teen travel program that runs five. How do you how do you pronounce that? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, Yad the Yad, which is Hebrew for hand in hand. And it is a five-week leadership program for teens with and without disabilities that takes four buses of teens on a tour for this, this summer program. And as part of, of you know, that being the staff for this program was promotion of the program and every year, you know, recruiting new participants. And, um, and I, after, you know, 12 years of doing it, you, you get to know those parlor meetings. Um, you know, almost in your sleep, and there were always certain questions that, like, you have your scripts you start with, and then you know that two questions are going to come up, right? So any any Jewish mother who's hearing that you're traveling for five weeks with one small suitcase or one, you know, like, okay. yeah, <laughs> because I suitcase. I've been I, yeah we've it's been I've been to rate. yeah um um I've been to Israel. You're only allowed to carry like fifty pounds. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. So you have your fifty pounds, and you need it for all summer long, right? So you ask about laundry, and what was the second question every every parent wanted to know? Food. How it works? Well, food. Okay, so that was maybe like number three, four, five. Um, I do think the, the food on the program is excellent, but that's my personal opinion. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. Because uh, I, I happen to be, I love dairy, and I think that the dairy food in Israel is so outstanding. But you could see that for another another time if you do a food podcast. Um, and if you're, <laughs> yeah, that, well, yeah, but, we, we 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 plan but, to do that. But go ahead. Uh, but the other question besides laundry was always grooming. You know, how could uh. my teen, who like only interact, my teen without disabilities, who only interacted with somebody with disabilities once or twice in their life, how are they now going to be roommates and live together for five weeks in the same room? 
like that was so mind blowing to, to our family. And I always knew in running these parlor meetings that you know those were the first two questions. Then anything. There's another. Know, there's another question that mm-hmm. might have that I can interject. That one of the things sure. of of me being a challenged person is um, when I first went to Israel in 2014. It was my first time. Uh, you know, and I went with family, and of course, family is not going to take us to a dangerous place. So, um, but one of the biggest things is the money, the money exchange, because if you don't know the money exchange, it's, it's very confusing. Oh, totally, totally, and that's actually, I mean, as a side, that's something on the program um, you were talking before about you know, skills for independence, we actually have staff members who part of their job is really to teach the participants about managing the money that they come with to the program and how that works when the coins and the bills and all of that looks so different. Um, totally. Yeah. So, yeah. So in terms of the story, you know, in terms of what I was saying before, is it, that, you know, went on for years, and years, maybe 10 years straight, you know, that I was always asked those questions. Um, and then all of a sudden, one year, I think it was 2015, something funny happened. That, that question wasn't asked. No one asked about rooming. And I left the meeting, and I was like, that's so weird. Like, this question wasn't asked. I'm like, wow. Like, that's interesting. And then the next week, I had another parlor meeting. And then I went to, you know, a different community and had a different parlor meeting there. And um, the question was not asked. Mm-hmm. And for my last years with the program, I that question was never asked in, in those forums. And I was just so deeply impacted by that um, because, you know, I, I think that, you know, we're seeing it, that when we're talking about, you know, it, it, what inclusion does. Your question was about misconceptions. Like yeah. What inclusion does and what exposure does is it completely changes mm-hmm. people's attitudes and the way that, you know, they're, they're, they're perceiving what's, what's the normal. All of a sudden, the key. Um, I'm going to ask this question that I'm going to ask this question that's not on the list and then my wife wants to ask another question um, sure. being see if we can answer this the right way um, or, or kind of pick it apart being the fact that you know 2020 was a bad year and, and we're still in the pandemic and there's a whole lot of things with prejudice going on you know people putting uh, bad things on synagogues and 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 in that type of thing, does ya is Yaha teaching or is OU teaching or both? Uh, any any classes on prejudice and people with special needs in any way to kind of help with that or 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 kind of smooth smooth uh, smooth you know smooth it over because there's always been prejudice uh, around uh, Jewish uh, people with special needs or Jewish people in general especially with World War II etc so is is there anything that is being done Um, that's a really interesting question I I apologize if I threw you off but go ahead uh, no I I, I, thank you Um, I appreciate the question and I appreciate also uh, the recommendation and I see the recommendation is something we haven't been doing so out front, but maybe it's something that we should be thinking about a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think that it may look a little bit different in maybe our the programs or our schools. It, it could be, you know, in terms of current events and things like that. Um, in the realms that I'm involved in, we have no formal programming like that. Rather, it comes up, you know, in our Zoom programs or social programs, um, you know, and, and support groups and things like that. And, you know, it's kind of dealt with and navigated there. But I, I take that as, as a good, you know, suggestion for the suggestion box of something to, for us to think about. In terms of the wider OU, I do think that there are, um, there are definitely branches of the OU more focused on that. The OU actually has um, a whole advocacy branch um, called the Teach Coalition. They focus mostly on schools. Um, and I think synagogues, uh, you know, I, I, it's not my realm, so I apologize. I'm not totally okay. 100% familiar. Um, but, you know, in terms of, of fighting prejudice um, and responding and putting out statements and things like that, you know, that there are, are other parts of the um, that are, are much more front and center. Okay. Uh, anything, 
<laughs> what did you want to ask? Um, do, do you teach uh, uh, another language to to uh, to the, the people with disabilities? In, in terms of Hebrew, is Hebrew taught to uh, your participants, or how do you teach Hebrew, or is there an easy way to teach the language of Hebrew to uh, people with disabilities? So in, in our schools, in our schools, they have a dual curriculum. They're, they're Jewish schools. So half the day they're learning secular subjects, half the day they're learning Hebrew subjects, including Hebrew language. Um, at our programs, you know, we teach songs and chants and things like that, a lot of them with Hebrew words. Um, it's definitely built into our culture, but each of our participants are coming with such different backgrounds. So it's, it's kind of hard, you know, to have like a one size fits all, but, um, but yeah, especially, you know, for things like, I, you know, talking about before the, the sitter initiative, the, the prayer book, um, you know, but, you know, we're going through it. We will say, you know, take certain phrases in Hebrew and things like that. Okay. Um, is there anything before we end, is there anything you would like to add, um, especially, you know, promotions or anything of that nature? Take your time. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I think, you know, first first of all, I, I really thank you for having me on the show. Um, and I want to highlight that it is um, the month of February, which is JD, Jewish Disability. Um, it's, it's the Jewish Disability Month, but Jewish Disability Awareness, Acceptance, and Inclusion, um, where there's you know, an increased uh, voice, there's an amplification uh, in the, the community about disability and inclusion. Um, and Yaka, you know, really does a lot during the month to um, to promote um, that advocacy work and, and you know, and really amplifying everything that um, individuals with disabilities can do and, and um, through workshops and, and many other um, programs. Um, but um, I invite, I think, two things. One is um, I invite anyone that may gain or may know somebody who may gain from Yachad Services to please reach out on, through the, the website. During this pandemic, um, we are offering you know, almost a, a dozen virtual programs a day, music, dance, trivia nights, games with local schools, monthly birthday parties. Um, we're offering support groups for individuals, parents, siblings, um, holiday programs, um, at home art deliveries. Um, I, I mentioned the boxes before. In some places, like in New York, and only in one of the communities we're allowed to do in person right now, but we have some of the in person smaller programs. Um, but we, you know, if you know somebody or you yourself are interested, please reach out. We would love to meet you. And and what I'll leave with is um, Yafa's future. Um, yeah, like, yeah. Um, I, I apologize. Yeah. What is, what is yeah? I apologize. Uh, uh, what is yeah? You know the f- the future of Yaha given the pandemic. I mean, mm-hmm. we don't know when this thing will end. Uh, hopefully, it ends soon. But what is Yaha's future? Okay, so I, I I just I love that question. I know we spoke about that a little bit when we spoke before the show. I apologize. Um, Go ahead. Director Emeritus, Dr. Jeffrey Lipman, and our International Director of Rami Adler, who both passionately, um, you know, answer this question that's so commonly asked of what's your hope for Yafad? Their hope for Yafad is that we're put out of business, that we do not exist in 10 years from now. Why? That's a pretty amazing answer. Right? Why? So why? Why? Why would it be that we don't need to exist? Because the community is our... our are so open and inclusive and inclusive of individuals with disabilities that they no longer need an outside organization to come in and add support that that the the synagogues are doing it on their own the schools are doing it on their own the camps are doing it on their own the job sites are doing it on their own that we reach this place that inclusion is just so natural to everybody um and it's not even you know like it's not even like you are thinking like okay you know what steps need to be taken it's just so much a part of our fiber um that you know that 
the, the biggest the biggest blessing for the organization would be that we, we don't need it because the community is doing it on our own. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, go ahead. Last question. My wife wanted to ask a question. Uh, sure. do, do you prepare people with disabilities for their bat mitzvahs or bar mitzvahs? Did you get great your question? question. Mm-hmm. Yes, great question. Um, so yes, in, in different regions, it's done differently. Um, and every family celebrates a little bit differently, but there definitely, um, you know, have been many instances over the years where, um, you know, people are learning something or celebrating in a certain way with Yafad or at a Yafad program or, you know, running a program that they're inviting their Yafad friends to, um, for, um, a, a bar mitzvah or a bat mitzvah for um, you know Jewish teens, um, and I would say also other life cycle events as well. Um, we we run a dating and marriage course. Um, mm. We have an amazing social worker who supports. <laughs> so yeah, I think life cycle events. You know, I, I think that that's also so deeply tied. You know, when you're talking about like why Jewish programming you know I think that for any religion and any you know and whatever religion people are practicing life cycle events become so important um, to, to those practices so yeah the hope is is that we, we have you know that we are there for the life cycle events to celebrate the good and, and be supportive in the not so good um, mm. and um, yeah we, we you know about two years ago Yafan hired a rabbi for the organization who's so fantastic, um, Rabbi Shai Shuster. So, you know, we have somebody giving giving that guidance also and helping answer questions that families may have of how they can practice and, you know, what, what they can do. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, well, we would like to thank you for joining us on this edition of Able Then On Air. Um, can you give um, the contact information of Yachad and the website? Sure. Uh, thank you so much for having me. The, yeah, you can hear more about Yafad on our website. Um, learn more about Yafad, yafad.org, Y-A-C-H-A-Z dot O-R-G. Um, and on there, there's you'll you'll see all the contact information, how to get in touch. It's been a pleasure. Okay. By the way, Yachad New York, in partnership with uh, Karen Publishing of um of Jerusalem as well as the Orthodox Union uh presents a special book now uh sometimes it's extremely hard um before we end able to on we just sometimes it's extremely hard for uh, people with disabilities um people uh, of um that want to know more about Jewish life and that are Jewish um uh, which this episode is about, um, sometimes it's really hard for people with disabilities to have uh, an accessible book or an accessible place to worship. So what Yechad New York, along with the Orthodox Union and Karen Publishing have done is that um, the, um, the, the Legacy Heritage Edition, uh, Karen Yachad Siddha, uh, which is a standard size book. Um, the the Yahad Sitter is a trailblazing prayer book intentionally and lovingly designed to enable those with different abilities to have the inclusive and meaningful prayer experience. So this book um, allows uh, easy reading and easy um, English translation and it's innovative design and um, able uh, to be read in a color-coded format, which you'll see um, pictures of in a minute. Uh, and it's color-coded, and it makes it easier for uh, people to read. So for more information on this book and how to get it, you can contact Yachad New York at www.yachad.org. That's www.yachad.org. Um, we would like to thank our special partnership. We would like to thank Yachad New York and the Orthodox Union um, for the special edition of Ableton on Air. I'm Lauren Seiler, 
and um, Arlene is here as well. We would like to thank you for joining us on this special edition of Ray Bolden On Air. See you next time. This special episode of Ableton On Air is brought to you in partnership with Yachad New York, Because Everyone Belongs, and the Orthodox Union. <laughs>